is Astro Yoga Woman, Debbie Barnett. Today is May 16th, 2018. This is the Learn Western Astrology Meetup Group at Crave Coffee House, Broadway and Swan in Tucson, Arizona. Topic this evening, dun, dun, dun. Uranus into Taurus, which happened on the 15th, right at a new moon in Taurus. We've got Mars squaring Uranus right now. So before we get into the topic at hand, I just kind of want to take everybody's pulse. I feel like crap. <laughs> How's everybody else feel? <laughs> like, I don't know if I forgot to take my allergy medicine this morning, but I'm kind of like, itchy thing, my sinuses, I got low energy, and then a friend of mine who's an astrologer in LA was saying, my head feels really fuzzy and unclear. Is anybody else? And I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it was yesterday. <laughs> yesterday? Yeah, I was super sick there. Yeah. yeah? I felt yeah. really like that yesterday yeah. too. Yeah. So yeah. slow, couldn't even like yeah. barely move. Yeah. yeah. It was like out of control. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, that's right. Yesterday. Yeah. Not today, yesterday, though. No. Today's good, though. Yeah? yeah. yeah. How about you? It's, it's been okay. Um, today, we're generally moving. Yes. I'm usually better in, like, wind, or not wind, but air and fire. Uh -huh. It was the Pisces wind that got me last mm -hmm. week, but mm -hmm. I was still a Philip in recovering from. No. <laughs> that was just draining. Yeah. Good. Yeah, so Uranus into Taurus. Uh, Uranus is one of the outer planets. It's, it goes past Saturn. So it was the first planet discovered after Saturn. Prior to that, Saturn was the edge of the known universe. So Saturn was God. That was limitation, right? Well, then they discovered Uranus. It was 1781. And it, like, revolu it was during times of revolution. And so it's whatever is happening at the time that a planet is discovered, that's sort of the imprint of what that planet has. So think of the French Revolution, the Revolutionary War, all those type of things. And so it's an 84-year orbit around the sun. And it's known as the rebel. It's known as the um, awakener, the disruptor. It's all about freedom and liberation and individualism. Yes. Hi, Astrid. Welcome. Come on in. This is Astrid. She's new to town. She just moved here from Orange County, right? Yes, wonderful. Welcome. Scoot on in. Let's all get us cozy, y'all. Get cozy. There we go. Uh, so wherever... Your, what Uranus touches, it's like, it's a, an awakening. It's as if a bolt of lightning goes off, like it's a dark stormy night and it's you know pitch black and all of a sudden a big strike of lightning happens and you can see the entire landscape. You're like, come on. <laughs> I had no idea, right? So it's this illumination. Uh, it's the higher vibration of Mercury. So... For instance, right now, with Uranus at zero degrees Taurus, it's square my one degree Mercury in Leo. So it's like it's challenging my mind to step it up. <laughs> like keep, like Kundalini Yoga, they say keep up. You're doing this for 11 minutes. Keep up. <laughs> I keep doing that. <laughs> lose my glasses. Um, <clears throat> so it's... Um, Things happen all of a sudden, right? It's, it's things have been status quo, and all of a sudden now they're different. So what did I put in my Facebook thing today? Something about my tagline for this transit, which will last seven to eight years, uh, is uh, say goodbye to the status quo. So that's sort of the theme of this of this talk tonight, of our discussion, and also the next eight years say goodbye to the status quo because how things are right now in the world are not how it's going to be eight years from now Taurus is an earth sign it's fixed earth uh, meaning it doesn't like to change Leo is fixed fire Aquarius fixed air Scorpio fixed water 
So fixed signs, they like stability. They like consistency. They like things to be status quo. They like the same. Right? Here comes Uranus, who gives zero you-know-whats. <laughs> it's tough. You're going to awaken whether you want to or not. So this transit means that we're bringing this awareness, this awakening, this higher mind, this um, innovation, this quest for freedom to things of a Taurian nature. Okay. So what is Taurus rule? Venus is the ruler of Taurus, yeah. But as far as like keywords for Taurus, what would some properties or like the earthly pleasures like food and uh-huh. like nourishing yourself yeah so earthly pleasures food nourishing yourself what else does Taurus rule money money so say like banks like banks yeah. second yeah. house yeah. right things where it's stored yeah, like storing banks. money yeah. reserves financial yeah. reserves yeah. currencies it's the material realm. It's your material storehouse as opposed to the eighth house, which is other people's money. This is your personal money, right? So your personal belongings, your personal comfort and pleasure and um, financial reserves. <laughs> and so here comes this planet that wants to disrupt everything in a, in a sign that, like steady as she goes, <laughs> Taurus is very rhythmical, right? Think of the seasons, right? You plant crops at a certain time of year, and then the crops grow, and you harvest at a certain time. Right? It's the season. It's rhythmical. Day and night, seasonal, rhythmical. Right? And all of a sudden, here comes an earthquake, which, look at Hawaii. Just before it, it changed signs, right? we've had all these... Hawaii um, volcanoes and earthquakes, and we've been having, like I was going to California, so I'm like watching the earthquakes. Mm-hmm. Last time? An earthquake when I was just there. Yeah, there were San a couple. Diego. Yeah. There always are. Yeah. Like these were like 4.5, almost to be felt. But when Uranus changed signs the last time, eight years ago, like it was 29 degrees Pisces before it moved into Aries, and we had Fukushima. So major earthquake, major tsunami. We're still feeling the fallout from that. So that's Uranus. Hello. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> so now it's in a fixed earth sign. That was cardinal fire. Now it's fixed earth. So we might see earth changes. Right? More volcanoes, more earthquakes, tornadoes. Yeah, we're seeing things right now on yes, the East we Coast. Uh-huh. East Coast is under like tsunami. New Jersey was under a tsunami warning yesterday. Currency. Yes. Could be shifting. Yes. Somehow. Currency. So Taurus rules the financial market. Mm-hmm. the bull market, right? Yeah. Taurus the bull. The bull market, bear market. So we're seeing the rise of cryptocurrencies. And it's a possibility that... Our banking system will not be the same. That we will not do, we will not have cash, or we will not have credit. It may be all cryptocurrency in eight years. You know, it may be all some kind of cyber or something or another that there's not any real, like it We're already starting to use. The chip in the the skin. Yeah, your phone. They get you so tied into (laughs) technology. Right? Um, But. Kim mentioned food, so Taurus rules food, right, and agriculture and food production. So you're going to see changes in that sort of thing, in food production. Also, Uranus is about the people, right? It's the ruler of Aquarius. So Aquarius is the humanitarian, right? It's all about we, the people. And so in Aries, it's all about me, 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 me. Now it's in Taurus. It's like, how are we going to feed all these people? In a sustainable way. Let's use our brilliant mind, because Uranus is brilliant, you know, it's the genius. You know, it's like Einstein with its hair, it's too much electricity, right? Where's electricity? So it's like all these ideas. How are we gonna use all these ideas to feed people and to produce food? And maybe it's using um, electricity in a different way, like on the domestic front. Also, real estate. Quite likely see a uh, crash of the real estate market in the next eight years. 
especially in places where it's overvalued. Like how mm-hmm. uh-huh. in the Northwest area. Yeah, Pacific Northwest. Yeah, yeah Seattle yeah. and Portland. Uh, they're really seeing yeah. big spikes. Boulder, too, Denver. So, if you're thinking of buying real estate, I would say hold off for now. <laughs> Wait, because you'll probably get a good deal in a couple years at somebody else's mis- misfortune, unfortunately. Um, but it it brings volatility to the markets, including the stock market. Right? Wild swings, erratic, sudden changes. You know, wild, wild highs, wild lows. So the last time, think what was happening 84 years ago. So 1934 to 1942, what was going on? It was the end of World War II. It was also the rise of Hitler, Stalin, Mussolini, fascism. It was the end of the Depression. And so they put in all these places, things like Social Security and Medicaid and Medicare, all these things that they're now trying to take away. You know, these social services nets, like take care of the people, right? And then it's kind of gone to the wayside. Well, it's like, we, Uranus is we the people. Right? And so it's saying we the people will take care of ourselves because it's the rebel, right? It's not Saturn is the government. <clears throat> That's the other ruler of Aquarius. This is the, the people are going to figure out a way to take care of ourselves because clearly the government is let us down. Clearly the government's agenda is not the same as our agenda, which is taking care, <laughs> feeding people, housing, clothing, basic needs. That's Taurus. Basic human comforts. And then pleasure, right? So all of that up for change. Do, 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 do. That kind of is. You know, I posted this thing on my Facebook page with that some other astrologer had put, you know, all these things that might, and we don't know what's going to happen. That's the thing. We can look back and go, well, this is what happened 84 years ago, and this is what happened on the time before that. So you kind of get an idea. And yet, you know, I believe it's up to us as the light bearers to keep our dristy, to keep our focal point. And it's like, yeah, the he- world is going to hell in a handbasket, and I've got a job to do. I've got a torch to carry <laughs> of my own individuality, and that's Uranus. It's like, this is the time of individuals speaking up, right, and saying, enough of this, enough of being sheep, we're leading ourselves, I'm going to let my authentic self shine. Right, the opposite um, of Aquarius is Leo. So Leo is the individual, it's the self, and it's all these creative gifts. Well, the Uranian impulse is to share those gifts. So it's like up to each one of us to develop our our uniqueness, our gifts, our talents, our abilities to share with the collective. And that's the point. So I have Leo Sun and Leo North Node, Mercury and Leo opposing Saturn in Aquarius. Saturn smack dab on my south node, 8 degrees, opposing my sun. So it's all about how am I supposed to be the best Leo I can be, be the best leader, be the best organizer, creative, fun, so that the collective benefits. Not so that I get, oh, look how great I am. No. It's so that those gifts help other people find joy, find peace, find relaxation, find stress relief, find some clarity, find some guidance. Not to make me better, to make everybody better. But we're all supposed to do that. Whatever your unique gifts and talents are, bring them out. It's time. It's time for us to show our individuality and our authenticity and to be real. It's like you can't hide in the shadows anymore. That lightning strike hits and you're like, I'm exposed. <laughs> there I am for everybody to see, you know. Broad daylight in the middle of the night. Yeah, actually, when you're mid-heaven, it's like I only see those like career. Depends on which house system. If you go by equal house, it's Aries. If you go by Placidus, it's Pisces. Okay. Which one do you... Pisces. Pisces. <laughs> 
Because I was going to say that I'm new to the whole equal house system just the past year or so. So I feel more like Pisces is my career path than Aries because I'm a spiritual teacher and I'm a yoga teacher and astrologer. Yeah. The elder. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. More the wise old soul than the brash pioneer. Not that I can't do that, but I feel better as a Pisces type career than an Aries. So it would change if you do equal houses. It can. It can. Placidus. Placidus. I call it platypus. <laughs> platypus house. Placidus. Yeah. So what I learned was that after after the Saturn return, instead of Placidus, to do equal house. Because by then, hopefully the person is living more their ascendant, which sets the angle. So I've got four degrees, 15 minutes, Cancer rising. So then all my angles, all the houses, but especially the angles, are going to have that same four degrees of a cardinal sign. After the first Saturn return? Yes. And then just leave it the same after? Then it's the equal, equal, yeah. Mm -hmm. and then this sounds very mathematical. It is. This is the science of astrology. It's very interesting. It is very interesting, yeah. So this has been thoroughly studied and like well, thousands of years old. Yeah. So I was just explaining. She asked me what my... This is Matt, by the way. Hey, Matt. He's also an astrologer. Okay, cool. I was just, she asked what my midheaven was. And I said, well, it depends on what house system. Could be Aries, could be Pisces. She said, well, what do you identify with? And I said, Pisces, <laughs> which is how I'm used to it. So Matt's the one that told me about the changing it after the Saturn return. So if you want to tell us why. About what? The house system changing to equal. So oh. platypus. <laughs> Placidus. It's, it's really just based on feeling like when Saturn goes through your, your first 30 years of your life, right, you have experiences that Saturn is teaching you, right, through experiences on, my, on Earth to deal and be responsible. So what happens with your Saturn return, you start to, after you have your, which is about 30 years old, you start your second Saturn cycle, and you start to have similar experiences. They're not the exact same, but they're similar similar in energy, and it's testing to see whether you <laughs> matured it or not, and are, are starting to learn. From, so it's this, with the house systems, it's the same thing. What I was taught was that as people become more and more mature, they become more and more what they're off their ascendant, who they truly are. And in order to honor that point, the ascendant, your rising sign, they go to an equal house system basically because they, they feel like you're honoring your ascendant and you're really being who you are a lot more. Like you've matured basically and the other reason why is all mathematical based house systems, including Placidus, actually don't work at a certain point. Like the math does not work for higher latitudes. So if you see someone like that's born in Alaska or Norway or something, they'll have the craziest looking yeah. chart you'll ever see. Like the first house will be 120 degrees and the second house will be like 10 degrees. So I stay, it, and basically it's because, and I, I'm not a great math, I'm a math person myself when it comes to like algebra and calculus, but there's a book out that you can even read where it shows you how the math breaks down. And like if there's a certain point where the math just doesn't work. So, so to me, the ascendant, once a person has gone past their Saturn return, they're like mature enough to really own their ascendant. And the equal house system basically is saying that ascendant degree is where every other house should be starting to. Like, so if your ascendant is 10 degrees with the equal house system, every house cusp will then be 10 degrees. And you'll have exactly 30 degrees in every house, which in reality makes a lot more logical sense too. That, you know, just like the zodiac is divided exactly into 30 degrees, even though the constellations aren't 30 degrees, because it's a timepiece more than a space piece. That's why a lot of astronomers get confused about astrology. They don't realize it's more of a timekeeping um, system than a space keeping system because they think 
that we're basing our signs on constellations and they're the That's Greek Vedic astrology. Yeah, it's Indian not really astrology. it's it's really the Greeks it's it's really a time. Yeah. Logos is time, astrology, yeah. star time, astro, star, lo Ology is logos comes from logos, so it's time, and it's a time. The first astrologers were calendar. They they were there were no calendars. They, their main job is to let us know what day it, it was of the season, so that people agriculturally knew what to do to survive. Which is so, Taurus. So yeah, so so it's really to me once people are mature enough, I really like to honor the rising sign by making every house equal to what that rising sign cusp is, and therefore you get that equal 30 degrees everywhere. And like I said, if you want to go to math, any of the math-based systems don't work. The math actually breaks down at high and low latitudes, and they don't work. So to me, it's like, well, why would you use a system that eventually is breaking down and doesn't work on every level? So. For long-winded, long-winded. I'm sorry. Thank you. So, uh, prior to the, our discussion on the house system, what did you guys hear me say about Taurus or Uranus or changes to expect? What's coming up? Changes in banking, real estate, food, money, currencies, currency. stock market. What is it going to change? That might be the better question. What is not going to change? Scorpio. Scorpio. <laughs> Do you think? I don't think so. It may not like it. So I'll tell you what's not going to change. People's desire to know what the hell's going on. <laughs> Right? My astrology business has picked up. Matt's astrology business has picked up. It's like everybody's feeling this like craziness. And so they're like, what's happening? Somebody give me some clarity, some guidance. Right? Even this today, I teach yoga to um, elementary school teachers. And so I ask them, you know, how, what, how's the day? What do you want? What are you doing? And this one, she teaches kindergarten. She goes, I had to do anger management yoga this morning with my kids. And I go, anger management yoga? She goes, yes. I had to have them sit like this and breathe. She said, I had three kindergartners in the office before school even started this morning. She said, somehow two alpha males sat next to each other. I go, you got alpha males in kindergarten? <laughs> Alpha males. I go. I guess I gotta start somewhere. She goes. Yeah. Two alpha males sat next to each other. I had to separate them, and then they ended up in the principles. I go. Well, I have to say, Mars is square Uranus right now, and zero degrees of fixed signs. So it's stubborn, and they're digging their heels in, and there's lots of ego involved, and there's lots of arm right. And she goes. That is it in a nutshell. So kindergartners. They don't know what's going on. You know, they're not Mars is square Uranus. I think I'll act out today. <laughs> so this stuff affects us whether we realize it or not. And it's what we do with it, yeah? So who has their charts? And if not, it's okay. Um, but if you have your chart, let's see where you have Taurus. So I posted, I don't know if you saw that post. I don't even remember where I posted it of some other astrologer's thing, right? And I said, wherever you have Uranus transiting through your 10th house is where you'll feel this possible disruption. I never say it's going to be one way or not, because I don't know. I don't know jack anything, you know? As far as I know, we're all making this up, right? You know? yeah, Although it does seem pretty mathematical, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it seems pretty convincing to me. <laughs> but anyway, people got on this gig of where they have Uranus in their natal chart. And I'm like, that's not what I'm talking about. They're like, I don't have zero Taurus in my chart. I'm like, yes, you do. So it's like, is there somewhere, may not have any planets, but you have zero Taurus in your chart. It's the outer ring. So it became this whole lesson on how to read a chart, which, you know, it was disruptive. It was out of the, uh, out of the norm. Um, so, so we're looking for zero degree Taurus? Yes. Zero Is it in the fifth or sixth then? Zero degree Taurus. So that's six degrees on the cusp. 
So zero would be. You guys know what a Taurus looks like. It looks the, like the bull, the sign. Mm -hmm. right. a circle with horns. So it's in your fifth house. That's what right I thought. Okay. It's That's moving. What I it'll up. be moving into thought. your sixth pretty soon. But right now, oh, okay. do you know what uh, degree it goes to before it retrogrades? It's actually going to go back into Aries. Yeah, I know. It's going to go to two degrees. It's going to go to two degrees. Go back to Aries in October. Oh no, I was just wondering where my stuff. And I think it's only going <laughs> yeah, back to about small. 29 Aries yeah. before yeah. it goes forward. But the I think it's, I think it's next in November. January 19th was where it's going to be there for good, like yeah. for the next seven or eight years. I think it's closer to eight this time too. Yeah, I think it's eight saying. years. I want to say it's in November that it goes back into Aries just for a little bit and yeah, it comes yeah, back out. Somewhere in the fall. Okay, so Leah has it in her fifth house, so what's that going to be like? Fun, creative. Well, I mean, that's what that is, but it's probably not going to be those things, right? It's going to disrupt those Well, things? it might be. Children? It might be. Something is that like unexpected? Unexpected. Oh, okay. Careful, that yeah, that's what I'm see these okay. eyes. Yeah. These eyes are saying. <laughs> okay. I know he's your favorite in the whole world. Yeah. Man. <laughs> Surprise. Um, so creative outlets, mm -hmm. fun games, gambling, risk taking. Oh, that's a good thing then, right? Yeah. Okay, gambling, I'm going to the right? casino then. That sounds gambling. good. Um, astrology. Learning astrology. Yeah. That's yours. Uranus rolls astrology. So fifth house, Uranus transiting the fifth house could say like a sudden maybe you start doing astrology art. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm doing a lot of art right now. I know you are. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Nice. Okay, so I tell us Leo rising. So Taurus is zero. Taurus is in her ninth house. Okay, so what's the ninth house? Sagittarius house, yeah. What is travel. it? Travel. Travel. Long distance travel. Long learning. They're foreign. Higher foreign cultures. Higher learning. Higher learning. Higher law. Philosophy. Uh, your belief systems might be up for renewal. You might like decide to move to a foreign country. You might, uh, yeah. Like I'm leaving. I'm leaving on Tuesday to go to Israel. See? <laughs> there you go. She just got, <laughs> she just got back from Israel. Yeah. Maybe you'll move then. I hope not. Want to go so far. I know, it's very fun. <laughs> I would, I love it, but my family is yeah. Okay, so what else is ninth house? What else might be up for change for her? Mm -hmm. Ideologies. Go away, it's traveling through her ninth house. We're discussing potential for long distance travel. She said she's going to Israel. That's long distance travel. Yes. <laughs> Foreign cultures. <laughs> really yes, it'll be a few years of that. It's in my ninth house too. That's where I just went into. Here it is, it's my ninth house. So. Rising. Oh, my rising. You're early, Leo. She's a double year also. That's your tenth house. In my tenth house too. Okay. And what you? I think my tenth house too. That's right. I'm a cusp. Yep. Right. It just went over. Um, it just went over your midheaven. Midheaven. So your career. No, that's been really all oh bad. I have a stable job now, but I'm applying to other jobs because I'm not happy. Yeah. <laughs> but I might just have to stick with this job. It'll, Uranus is really good at letting you know what you're not happy with. Yeah, and it'll it'll take the job away from you. It's not like you have to quit. <laughs> the job will go away if it's not right for you. Yeah, because when it went over my midheaven, like I lost my job, but it was the right thing. And the time, you know, it doesn't feel good at the time, but. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. That that might that's, a yeah. Tough, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. weird. That's going to attend for a Yeah. So that is very true. Really bad, really. Could be parents <laughs> too, right? It could be a parent that you yeah. have to deal with. That's a possibility. Jupiter. Oh, huh? Yeah. Oh, like, that's yeah. Yeah. Tenth house is your parent, house of the parent. One of your parents, yeah. The one who usually has conditional love for you. It's usually the dad. 
these days. Pluto. But yeah, um, the conditional love parent. Um, it can also just like be with the way, like dealing with the public differently. Oh, okay. The way Can't you deal you. with the public differently. <laughs> See, what I would say about Uranus is it. like, it wants to bring creative change into our lives. Oh. And if we resist that, it, that's when it whacks us over the head with something that we really is upsetting. You know, it can be a quick jolt, but if you allow the creative change to come in and it can feel awkward and ungrounding and nerve scattering, it will bring you like to like these new insightful experiences with other people and situations and it's really exciting. It will really like open up new vistas for you. But it really, it, it'll open up new vistas for you. But it really, like, if you're resisting something that is like a staleness in your life that you kind of know that you need to change, like, you're, if you don't do it, Uranus will do it for you. That's why I say you don't have to quit. Uranus will pull the rug out. If it's not right for you, if the job's right for you, it won't happen. But if it's like, hey, you, you need to be doing something else and you're not moving, so here. Do it for you. Oh, your position has just been eliminated. What? How did that happen? Uranus. Right. Indecisive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have your chart, Master? work with it. It's right on your ascendant. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> and Chiron too. Woo. Well yeah, but yeah. that's that the, whole, the whole generation. So exactly. it's it's moving up on your ascendant. It's not quite there yet because your ascendant's 139. So but you're feeling it probably. Like you just moved, yeah. right? So you relocated your. You just came from Orange County. Well, that's a year. Which is a friend of my friend. Yeah. Was, you know? I mean, that's totally your ascendant. You know? <laughs> your ascendant is your body, your physical body, your physical body. So you just moved it. <laughs> you picked it up and moved it. You relocated your body, your house, your house got moved to the desert. Um, so it could be that. Um, your idea of who you are and your self-esteem changes like all of a sudden you're like oh my god i'm really smart about something that i didn't even know i was really smart about you know that's or, what happens when you come to tucson yeah right it does it's, an enlightening place for sure. it's a vortex yes. mm -hmm. it is a vortex especially out of orange county it's so dense oh, yeah. and stuff. i moved from mexico city because we had an earthquake in september oh. so um First of the, uh, before going to Mexico, I was in California. So I went to Mexico and my house uh, almost collapsed. Oh no, oh, wow. she moved from so California to Mexico here. City. Well, I'm going back to California, but and there was an earthquake in, in September. Well, like, Her house collapsed. Yeah. Yeah. Mexico City. So yeah, I understand. Yeah. And I have a question. See, earthquake is Uranus too. My, my body changed uh -huh. a year ago, and, you know, like half of a year ago. Change. Yes, that's your yeah. How old are you? Okay, so it could be perimenopause. When your hormones change, your body change. Mine has expanded and grown, and it still is. So, but does it yeah. feel like electrical at all or heated? Oh, uh huh. Yeah. Uh, well, it was a shock to your system. You know, PTSD and trauma. Uh huh. Oh, yeah, Uranus rules uh, natural disasters. So, you know, be experiencing a natural disaster while it's going over your ascendant. That's your body, and Uranus is natural. It rules natural disasters. Like I, this thing with the volcano going on in Hawaii. That's so Uranus and Taurus because it's the Earth. Taurus, Earth. And it's this natural disaster occurring, you know, that no one can stop, and it's upsetting a lot of people, you know, and their lives are being like totally torch. I mean, but they built on the side of a volcano, too, you know, it's kind of like, <laughs> like, duh. You know, it's probably gonna, one day it'll blow, you know, it's like, but it, I think it's today, you're 
Yes. Yes. I remember when I was in the Bay Area when the big earthquake hit in 1989 and it collapsed the freeway and the bridge and all that. The worst part was San Francisco where they built on the bay where they had filled in. Yes. Because the it's waves, not stable. yeah, the waves accelerate in fill instead of like calming the. They actually accelerate the seismic waves somehow because they're in, in fill. Hmm. So that's probably in Mexico City. They are all on that lake. That's what. <laughs> Today we had, we had a record. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it, it's non-stop. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of, like, probably earthquake and volcano activity from Uranus going into Taurus. When um, it, when it went into Aries to the day was the day the Fukushima got hit by the tsunami. It was literally the day Uranus went into Aries. So, you know, when, when I think about Uranus going to Taurus, like, stuff like volcanoes and earthquakes, because it's all Earth-related type stuff and Uranus is the ruler of natural disasters you know because it's something that's sudden and quick and unexpected this is not black tea right. well they're blaming a lot of this on a global warming is that a misnomer or <laughs> well I think... probably adds to the effect but I mean this is a cyclical thing that happens every 84 years you know so 84 years ago there wasn't the aspect of global warming. Was, I think it's a contributing factor, but it is also cyclical. Yeah. <laughs> they had the I'm dust going into like the last time yeah, Uranus the dust was bowl. Taurus. It was in the 1930s. Situation. And that's when the whole Midwest had that drought. Yeah, yeah I was thinking of other people's land just idea, started and turning like, dust. And they that. were literally <laughs> in Washington, D.C. <laughs> trying to figure out what to do for these mm-hmm. farmers and this giant wave of dust covered Washington, D.C. from the Midwest. Like, they said it blotted out, this, like, turned the day brown and everything. Like, literally, the, that's how bad the dust wow. was. It was literally just picking up tons of soil that had dried out and just depositing it all over the east. So a lot of these politicians are trying to figure this out. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we're talking about. <laughs> right. So that's what happened the last time. So that's why, you know, you just see, like, that... Uranus can rule a lot of like weather types related stuff. Oh, weather stuff. Yeah. yeah. So like, it rules natural disasters. Hot, dry winds, things like yeah, that. Yes. You know, just like even what we've had the last few days has been very windy and dry. You know, though it's a normal part of this time of the year here too. But, yeah. I'm gonna read some things that um, another astrologer posted online about this transit, and let's discuss what this means to you. Challenged capitalism. <laughs> Challenged capitalism. Mm-hmm. It kind of like we the people, citizens, yeah. their voice being heard. Uh-huh. Challenging capitalists yeah. and all yarks of plutocracy. Mm-hmm. Challenged capitalism. Dematerialized finances. Dematerialized. <laughs> Right, like Star Trek, they materialize and they dematerialize, they disappear. Like if you have a lot of money in the stock market and the stock market goes south, all your wealth just got dematerialized, vaporized. Taurus rules banking and finance, <coughs> so yeah, so it can do a big up and down, you know, a lot of up and down the next few years. Yes. Stock exchange turbulence. You know, we talked about that a little bit. Like wild fluctuations and swings. Real estate crash. Dismantling of property. Here's something we didn't talk about much. Um, the way we live, I feel, is going to change. Like everybody in their separate little house and separate little apartment living separately, I think that's going to change. And I think we're going to live more communally and more like in villages or centers, um, especially if we do have problems with the electricity going out, which it might. <laughs> you know, if there's a natural disaster and it takes down the electrical grid, we're screwed. And we better live communally <laughs> to get along, you know. Somebody's going to know how to grow food. Somebody's going to know how to purify water. So we got to collectively come together. Um, and with sort of the fall of the capitalistic agenda, 
I'm starting to see a lot more empty malls and a lot more stores, you know, retail stores closing up. And so I can see like turning all these empty malls into some kind of living community school center. I like a little village in a mall, like where they build out different places like dormitories or whatever, or living quarters, and then there's already like community centers in the mall, like the little food courts and whatnot. But reusing things that are left to waste, like reinventing how to use those for housing so that everybody can have a house and have shelter and have enough to go around. Smart farming. What is that? Probably um, conserving natural resources. Conserving natural resources. Okay. Well, look at, um, back to growing marijuana. Uh, hydroponics like now that more and more people grow marijuana and the hydroponic industry has really come up like I have friends that have these tower gardens have you seen those do you plug them in and they've got water and like all these vegetables growing out of this tower with just water there's no dirt so like smart food like growing food in a different way to meet the demand of 8 billion people More nature-based events, tornadoes, postmodern food. What's that? Postmodern food. Huh? Sounds bad. I know yeah. it does, doesn't it? Does. It sounds like, like space food or camping yeah, food or <laughs> pre-packaged something with postmodern food. I don't know what that like pellets. <laughs> like dehydrated pellets that you have to reconstitute. Or Sounds like that guy who tried to invent the one food that he'd eat all the time. That was the only thing he ate. It was some mushy stuff. It's like, yeah, I don't have time for food anymore. My life's too busy. So he came up that with one this, thing. You know, this perfect nutritional gruel, apparently. Oh. But it was horrible. People were like, how could you eat No way. I mean, the food's already pretty toxic yeah. to begin yeah, with. Right. And Taurus is about pleasure. You know, Taurus wants to enjoy its food. I can't imagine how, how it can get any worse. <laughs> and I talked about domestic application of electricity. That's why I think one of the things Uranus and Taurus is doing too is it's asking us, what do we really value? Yeah, you know? values. Like, you talk about food, right? And it's like, well... Taurus wants us to enjoy good food, nice and slow, essentially, you know? And that's not what's happening right now. So, like, maybe... There's a move toward the slow yeah, food. Yeah, it's slow maybe it'll be a move back towards something that's slower and more, like, you know, real. In the so maybe that's food. what postmodern food is. Hopefully. Like, in Europe, or, yeah, Europe, or Mexico, probably, even, where, like, they take their time. Like, it's a community thing to have a meal. It's not just... Like I, at the retreat this weekend, I was talking to a woman who's a waitress. She said, it's just so interesting to watch how people react to each other. She goes, these whole families come in and nobody's talking and they're all like this. Every one of them. <laughs> or looking at their phone, right? And so maybe we're moving back to, hey, let's actually have a conversation while we eat. Let's connect with each other. Let's take our time. Let's enjoy our food. Maybe it becomes more rare. You know, maybe food production, if we have another dust bowl or something, maybe food becomes more scarce, and so you better enjoy it. Because it's like, wow, fresh food? Oh, my gosh. Oh, cool. Well, Bear just bought out Monsanto. Oh. So that will also probably change this whole food thing. Right, yeah. Bear sure. Pharmaceuticals. Uh -huh. So, so now they're going to be putting our, the drugs into the food, along with the chemicals and the vegetables. <laughs> Yeah, bear has been into the, yeah. um, into the plant pesticide and death thing for about 20 years now. Yeah, it's interesting. And they're the ones that make baby aspirin. Yes, they, they were originally <laughs> just a pharmaceutical company, and they got into this 20 years ago. They make some of the worst poisons. They're almost as bad as uh, Monsanto, really. Um, they, make some, they make some really nasty stuff, for sure. It kills everything, not just the bug that you think it's killing. Right. It's, it's in the water. It's in the groundwater. Yeah. Yeah. We're drinking it. <laughs> so let's talk about the ingress chart. What's an ingress chart? Ingress? Ingress. What is an ingress? Think of a highway or a freeway. Moving into. Moving into. Like a, an on-ramp is a freeway ingress. Exit ramp is an outgress. 
changes. So when a planet changes signs, like every month um, the sun changes signs, like it ingresses Taurus, it ingresses Gemini. So you can do a chart, kind of like the solstices we did charts, and for the uh, Aries equinox, you can do a chart for the ingress of the planet. So this is set for Washington, D.C., so sort of how the country will be affected by this transit, so, I guess. And we've got Leo rising, 8 degrees, 13 minutes. Our current president has Leo rising uh, at 29 degrees, so the opposite end. But still, it's sort of a reflection of current administration. Not the north node, exactly conjunct. Listen. Dun, dun, dun. What's that mean? There you go. When I look at this chart, when I see the, the nodal axis, which is this guy north and this node, guy, south north node. node and south node, when it's right on the ascendant and descendant, when something's on the ascendant and descendant for the midhead in our IC, it's really plugged into the physical world. Like, it's like something that's very, like something in the physical world is going to happen, right? And this is like the United States, Washington, D.C. So what I saw was, what I think is like this Uranus and Taurus period, the United States is like going to have a lot of its karma, if you want to call it, come back and really like hit it hard. And, um, We're about to have a Pluto return. Yeah, so... I think um, a lot of it may have to do with Donald Trump because the tenth house is the president, the, the ruler in a in a mundane chart from Washington D.C. and that's where the sun and moon is, and the sun is also him. So I think like he he's going, he's dragging the country somehow through some karmic thing. You know, I'm a little bit worried about what's going on in the Middle East right now. In all honesty, like you know, I know like it's like very far away from all of us, and it's not real. But like when I sit there and think about what he's doing, so he's just there. What, My family yes. is there, so I'm just like, Whoa. yeah. What he's doing right now over there could cause like you know literally what some people call Armageddon, you know, because he's really like I think they really want to just go in and die, man, and take their oil, and that's what like. In the past, Uranus and Taurus, a lot of times there's like wars over resources, because Taurus is resource. So I'm like a little bit concerned with what he's doing there right now. Like on that level, I try not to pay too much attention to this stuff anymore because I think those people are so unreal and I think all of us are much more real than them. And I just like to deal with everyday people. And that's why it's myself. we the people. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Uranus is we the people, so. Right. Like I was late today because I sold I sold one of my vehicles to this guy from Texas, and he tells me I just moved to Arizona, and when I drove across the Texas border, I just felt like I left everything behind, all the bullshit, all the crap. My life just felt renewed. He's like I felt like I was rebaptized. He's like now I'm into yoga and I'm into this and that and the other thing, and I have a new girlfriend who's into all this new age stuff, and this is like some down home boy from Texas. And it was just great. He didn't tell me about her. It was great. You know, I mean, it was just like so, you know, I think there's like a lot of a lot of people are going to reassess what they really value. Their values, yeah, you know? what's important. And, and they're seeing like, you know, relationships and, and enjoying ourselves is more important than getting sucked in. But, you know, you hear about people who lived through World War II, and they'll tell you the same situation. They were all in like us. They were all being real people, and then these people decided they were having a war, and everybody's lives got affected by it. It, like, almost put a pause on people's lives for five years. I mean, I know people who had to sneak out of Germany and stuff, you know, things like that. You know, they tell me, like, I was this kid. He had to go in the middle of the night and sneak out of Germany in 1939, blah, 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 you know. So I like people's lives get interrupted by these guys, is my point. But I think what this is saying is like, we don't need these guys, really. Like, we can change our values and keep, you know, find new ways of, like, relating with one another and what we truly value, you know, so. Yeah. Uranus and Taurus is in its fall. Uh 
Uh-huh. So it doesn't like to be there? Yeah. No, because it's the rule of Aquarius, so it's square. Oh, yeah, so it's not happy there. But it, the thing is, normally, Uranus likes to move fast, and yeah. Taurus likes to move slow. So there's just yeah. like a little bit of a... Like Mercury. You know, there's a dichotomy there between the two of them. And also, Uranus is erratic, and Taurus likes steady as she goes. Stability. Yeah. Slow and steady, and... It's like the surprises. Yeah, it doesn't like surprises. Yeah. If we don't. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Questions, comments so far? Walk taken. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big, big change, you know, because when you think about it, everybody who's going to be born in the next eight years is all going to have, you know, Uranus is Taurus. So it's almost like a semi-generational statement, really. When an outer planet makes a change of signs, it's literally like a generation is changing, you know. And Uranus can be like, you know, it's an eight-year thing, so you kind of more like Neptune and Pluto even more so. But when you think about it, it's like, you know, you're going to have eight years of children being born with Uranus and Taurus, you know. So that's like a like really a, kind of like a semi generational statement. They're gonna look at values a lot differently than the people before and after them, you know? and they may be able to change values much quicker than the rest of us and be able to adapt to things very quickly, you know, and have like a lot of intuitive perceptions about the way values are not being used properly. And stuff, so be interesting to see so those you mentioned Scorpio so let's talk about how uh, this transit will affect the fixed sign so if you've got planets or points in Taurus that means it's going to be conjunct at some point over the next eight years so it's going to sort of like bring a highlight to that whatever that planet or point is in your chart if you have planets or points in Scorpio it's an opposition. So like Uranus is saying, it's time to wake up. You know, I'm gonna shine my lightning bolt spotlight on whatever area of life and it's time to wake that up and find your freedom, find your individuality. For, Tor- or for uh, Leo and Aquarius, <laughs> right, that's a square. A 90 degree angle. So it's like feeling forced into a corner, backed into a corner, and needing to take action whether you want to or not. It requires action. So, and it'll probably be something sudden. You know, it could be that relationships suddenly go south, or your job suddenly goes south. And, you know, you're backed into a corner and you've got to stand up for yourself and take individual action. For people with. Um, <clears throat> Other Earth signs, it's trine, so Capricorn and Virgo. Uranus will be trine those planets or points, so sort of our harmonious flow. Um, Let's say it's Venus, Uranus trine Venus. Maybe you have ideas about love and relationships, ways to make money, ways to do business. So if you have Venus and Virgo, then it's going to trine That's what you're saying? Yes, eventually. Yes. It's not all bad. No. <laughs> Uranus, yeah, when Uranus is a trine like that, you usually meet new interesting people who can give you a lot of new insights and perceptions. Now, one of the things about Uranus, too, is that's the planet of revolution, right? Okay? But it doesn't want to throw the system out. It just wants to improve it. Yeah. Okay? It's, it doesn't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. It's saying, like, listen, we've got a system. It's just the system needs improvement. It's stagnant. Saturnized. It's stagnant. It's, it's rigid. Sometimes we need radical change. Right, right. So it needs, to, yeah, it needs to be jumped in. You know? it, it is for the good. It, it is may for not the good. seem Absolutely. like it at the Uranus time. Is completely forward thinking. Yes. It's group oriented. For the it's humanitarian. Aquarian. It's very Aquarian. Yeah. It, it, 
absolutely is, although it's not emotional about it. No. This is so like I said, it gives zero Fs. You know? It doesn't really <laughs> care too much about the emotions. That's why, in a certain mind of way, that's why it rules natural disasters, too, because it doesn't get caught up in the fact that hundreds or thousands of people just got killed. It's trying to teach us a lesson that we're doing something wrong, like nuclear power, mm -hmm. not knowing what to do with nuclear waste right. is yeah. not a good thing. And, I, and since you guys aren't dealing with this, we're going to show you. I'm going to show you how bad this is. Like, you know, unfortunately, a bunch of people in Japan now, you know, live literally in a nuclear oven because of this, you know. But it's like, it's saying, listen, this system needs to be improved. And there's better ways to do things than the way we do it now, you know. It's like all that plastic you were talking about, the plastic's floating everywhere. And yet, there's ways to make plastic out of stuff that completely breaks down its natural materials. You know? You know, so there's there's ways to improve the system. Like the packaging doesn't have to go. It's what the packaging is made of. If you have something that goes into uh, into garbage in the ground and turns into like organic matter that's actually feeding the soil, you know, I mean that's like the packaging. Food production. You know? And that can be done. It can be done right now. You know. It's just like, so that's, you know, you see like a lot of things slowly trying to push us, but it's a race, you know. I think sometimes it's a race right now. Are we going to change fast enough? You know? And then the final one would be water signs. So other than Scorpio, because that would be an opposition, but Pisces and Cancer, it would be sextile, which is similar to a trine. So a, a flowing, easy aspect. Not that Uranus is easy, but <laughs> it's not like wake up in the middle of the night with the, your bed shaking. <laughs> What's nice about sextile is uh, they bring you an opportunity. I mean, Uranus is sextiling something, you should take the opportunity. Like it might be some sort of rising thing. You should take that opportunity because it's going to be a lot easier than you actually think it might be. But you, with a sextile, you like the opportunity is there, and a lot of people don't take them. You know? So, like, it's something like you know, it's not going to force itself on you. you know? It's like, okay, you know, if you like ask for something, like you know, like doing a spell or something, and you can't dictate what the gift is going to be, but when the gift comes, you better take it. <laughs> you know, and that's what, you, you know, Uranus, when it's sextiling something, it will bring you some kind of, like, off-the-wall opportunity may come, and it's a really good idea to take it. Mm -hmm. you know? So, for example, this chart here says right now, Uranus is sextile my name. So, my moon is in Cancer. How long does that last? What's the degree of your moon? It's going to be like a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, she's a double Leo with zero Cancer moon. So I would say like, your moon is a lot of it. It's internal. Yeah, you know, a lot of moon stuff's internal. Yeah. So, so it may be like just like getting like new perceptions on how your emotional being works and maybe seeing opportunities to change parts of that that you don't think are operating as well as you'd like to you know it's like once again don't throw out your whole system but maybe there's a better way to react you know or something you know you'll get the download you know it's like i tell my clients you know knowing we all have our own life story and we know what when someone says that to you, an astrologer or something, you know exactly what it is. You don't even have to tell me, and it would take you years to tell me anyway. But, a lot, but the thing is, it's like, okay, you know, I'm at my, like I'd say to someone, oh, you might be thinking about, you know, things changing the way that you actually think. And they'll be like, yeah, you know, that's actually... I have been thinking about that. It's not something you go around and explain to other people that you're changing the way you think. You know, you're just doing it. You know, it's like a, but it's something that's happening over a number of months. You know, so that like you're in a sex in the moon, it's going to be like, well, I see things about the way I react emotionally, and maybe like there's different ways that I can do that. You know, I have these new perceptions. Maybe there's new ways of me reacting to my emotional 
ways of reacting. And security too, even the way we look at security, moon. So here's some suggestions for how to weather this storm, if you will, for the next eight years. Uh, put your hands in the dirt. That was a good idea. Electrical storm. Whatever house Uranus is transiting is where your electrical storms will be happening. So do Taurus type things like ground. You know, put your feet in the dirt or in the grass. Not a lot of grass in Tucson, but you know, there's a lot of dirt. <laughs> Put your feet in the ground, lay on the ground. I was camping in Joshua Tree for four days, sleeping on the ground while all this stuff was happening, and boy, did that make a difference. Holy cow. And just the whole slower pace of not being, you know, in the rat race. Um, so stay, get out in nature as much as you can. Create routines, rhythms. Like our body appreciates consistency, routines. <clears throat> um, also, it helps to alleviate what's called vata, which is air. You know, vata, pitta, kapha, these are Ayurvedic gunas, so air, fire, earth. So when things feel out of sorts, it's very like vata. So we feel confused, we get insomnia and constipation and um, dry cracking bones, and it's just very discombobulating. So the more you can be close to the ground, have regular routines, get plenty of exercise, right? Taurus calcium is kind of a kapha type sign. It's sort of slow and not in any hurry. So they would be one that would need a more of a, a power yoga or hot yoga, as opposed to somebody who's a pitta, who's very like energetic, <clears throat> who's more likely to take a faster yoga class. They need the slower class the slower people need the faster of Pratipaksha Bhavana, do the opposite. Um, so find, find ways of exercising that fit for you, whether it's walking or hiking or yoga or swimming or whatever it is. Um, create some kind of routine, some kind of stability so that you can feel grounded. Because right? things, it's almost like, you know, if the earth is shaking... You want to be low to the ground. You don't want to be at the top of the tower. <laughs> you want to be close to the ground. There's a pose that a friend of mine, Dr. Shamas, um, recommends. He's a PhD. He was a professor at U of A for many years. He just wrote a book called Deep Creativity. And it's called Repose. And it looks like Shavasana, except your arms are out wide and your legs are out wide. So kind of like the Michelangelo man, you know, in the circle. I don't know that guy's name. Um, but he says do that for seven minutes, three times a day, morning, noon, and night, for a pose. You know, you don't have to clear your mind, like set your clock or whatever, set your phone. This actually been scientific. Yes, yes, it is scientifically proven. And it's a reset. It's like you're making yourself open and vulnerable, but you're also on the earth probably, or a bed or something, but just allow, it allows your nervous system to reset. So Uranus is electricity, and it's exciting, like Matt said. And when I was in California last week, that's my Uranus line, Uranus changing signs, full moon in Taurus, it was like, it was very like, Ugh. and so I needed that time in the desert for my nervous system to reset. So if you feel your nerves getting frazzled, if you feel yourself like, it's too much, it's too much. Get on the earth. Do some gardening. Put your hands in dirt. <laughs> Grow something. Tend to food. Do some cooking. Do something grounding. Eat like heavier root kind of vegetables rather than light salads or whatever because it's more grounding. Okay. So find your rhythm, find your routine. Um, what did I say my key phrase was for this transit? Who remembers? Say goodbye to the status quo. Say goodbye to the status quo. Also a good time to get your finances in order. You know, things are going to shift, but it's better to be as financially light as possible. Right? For when that shift happens, you don't want to be under some kind of burden of debt if you can help it. Um, housing market's going to change, so if you're thinking of buying a house or thinking of selling a house... Now would be the time to sell, more so than buy. 
if you gotta buy a house, you gotta buy a house. Um, I'm not a fan of cryptocurrencies. I think they're too easy to be hacked, which they are, they're being hacked, but you know, if you know somebody that's knowledgeable about that and that can help you with that, maybe check out cryptocurrencies. I'm gonna wait and see phase on that myself. I'm not gonna jump in on that thing right off the bat. It's probably something that'll take off for sure. Yeah. I think the I have sun conjunct Uranus. So Uranus is my friend. <laughs> Uranus has always been my friend. So I'm an astrologer. And I think what Uranus wants us to do. Uranus brings us like a jolt of life. Like when when Uranus hits you, you know you're alive. It's like those shocking okay? paddles. Like if you're out okay. running a volcanic lava flow, you know you're alive, right? <laughs> it doesn't have to be like that though. Like when you have some perception or you have an exciting conversation or you have some new idea come into your life or even some new experience that makes it gives you like a zest for life. This is what I think Uranus is telling me what he wants us all to do the next year. Next, next, eight, eight, years. Years. Next, eight, next year, eight years. Next year, eight years, right. It wants us to like enjoy life in an exciting way in slow motion. <laughs> Really, it wants us to like literally like do tourists to like this like zap, zap of life that it gives us. It wants us to actually slow it down and essentially enjoy that excitement of something new coming into our lives and making us feel more alive. That's what it wants us to do while it's in Taurus. To like, I giving you like this new gift or insight or something, and don't just like run off like a wild person. That but slow down and just like live every moment of it right in the moment. Because like I said, what all these other people are doing that are making the world crazy, we don't need to really. We can change just from the bottom up, you know. So we can slow down. And that affects everything. Everything can slow down. But I think that's really what it wants us to do. It's like, enjoy the zest that's coming into your life, however it is, but in a slow, sensual way. Because that's why we're here. We need to enjoy life, you know? Yeah. It's like, that's why Venus loves Taurus. It's like, yes, go take a nice bubble bath, and whatever, you know, get a massage, and... <laughs> You know, whatever you want to do. Delicious. Yes, yes. So, you know, I mean, I think that's really what it wants us to do in the next, as for people, you know, what these other guys will do, yeah, they may say to war over resources and do other crazy stuff, you know, but in the we meantime, can't we can't control it, and, we, and the only way we can effectively change it is like by changing ourselves and our relationships with one another, you know, so. Questions, comments. But I mean, at the same time, though, right, we're being affected by the planets. Absolutely. So we might want to take it slow or whatever, but how does that work with the planets? What do you mean? How does I don't know. I'm new to all this. Well, Uranus wants to go mean. fast, okay. but it's in Taurus. So think of a car going through sand. Okay, I think The it's car's it's moving forward, but it's not moving forward very fast because it's stuck in sand. It's not on the road. Here's a good right? way to can't say it. Go as I fast think I know what you're getting at. It's, it's more of like, okay, the planets are giving us an energy set to work with, uh -huh. and we, with our free will, decide how we want to work with that energy set. So when, you're, when, when Uranus is going to go through Taurus, it's going to do all these things, and yes, that's going to affect us, but the way we decide how to react to that can you know basically decide whether it's a good or bad thing for us you know it's really simple like good is something you like and bad is something you don't like it's really simple when people say something's good or bad it literally is what they like that or they don't like it you know 
So when, when planets are doing their thing, we can decide how to react to that thing. It's not like it's going to force us to go down some street or something, you know, but it's like, hey, this is the energy that's set up right now. Uh-huh. How well, do you want to work with this? Yeah, you know? like you say, when the full moon comes out, then people get a little crazy. Yes, so absolutely. Well, so what is going on here? They are actually, when the full moon comes out, they're, the moon is all your subconscious, okay? Everybody has like a split personality, whether they realize it or not. The moon is our subconscious personality. It's hidden from us for the most part. So what happens during the full moon is people, their subconscious personality comes out and kind of takes over. I live right next to a hospital, believe me. When it's the full moon nights, the ambulances and helicopters are nonstop. (laughs) They are nonstop those two or three nights. People do, I know people work in emergency rooms and they're just like, oh my gosh, when it's the full moon, that's when I try to take off. Well, even the neonatal intensive care, like their fluids go up because it's tides. So the baby monitors go off because the fluids are messing up their systems. Straight up, people are are acting out of their emotions rather than thinking. What does it does it have a real biochemical effect? Well, look at it this way. What does the moon do to the ocean? Uh, the tides. tides. Right. Is your that your a biochemical body, your, effect? Your body is made up of what? 70% water. Water. So if it does that to a big body of water, what do you think it's going to do? <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to learn all this. Right. I mean, I mean, out. literally, when you think about what it's doing to the ocean, that's the moon making the, the waves, you know, the effects of its gravity. And we are 70% water. Uh-huh. So there probably is some physiological thing that it's actually doing to us. They probably can measure actually some kind of physiological response that our body is doing. But I, from, from an astrological perspective, when there's a full moon, People basically are like, their emotional side is like, look at me. And they're unconscious. <laughs> look at me. <laughs> so they act out a lot of their, literally their repressed emotions. They're, they, they, it overrides a lot of their thinking that keeps it in check normally. It's like everybody drinking. <laughs> and, and getting All drunk. at once. Right, yeah. I think it's more so when also when it's transis, transiting a moon or opposing your moon sign, oh. it gets really intense. Absolutely. Uh-huh. Absolutely. It, it's, that's how I found out me doing a moon journal. Uh-huh. And the moon is, it's like it goes through the sign every two and a half days. Yeah. So. You kind of just kind of see how it affects your moon and then water signs are maybe less. <laughs> so that's how they will look at that down there. So we're at 8.30. Eyes. Wow. Let's, if you feel like it, say what you got from tonight's talk. What did you learn? What did you come to know that you didn't know? Are you scared? <laughs> I'm excited. I'm excited for change. Yeah. I think it's good. We're good. We that's need a, change. That's so. a good attitude to have, Lee. <laughs> I like the slow food movement. I want to get yeah. into that. There you go. I'm excited. <laughs> okay. Yes. We have a community garden open up by me, so I'm going to oh, cool. get into that. I'm nice. Excited. See, that's a very tourist yeah. thing. Yeah. Put your hands in the dirt. And community. Yeah, going to Italy, they yeah. say, is really good for that. Yeah. Really experience yeah. the slow food. Because that's how people are. In I was going to say, in they Europe, that's what they like do. You know, they, they take their time. Slow food there, you know. Cam, what'd you get? Um, yeah, the, the finances thing, I think, um, uh-huh. for me, because that's something that I've been trying to deal with for a while, so, like, and I bought a house at the height of the market, um, back in 2005, the market crashed, and so that that's a huge part of what I'm still dealing with, so, talking about this financial I was in, I'm like, fuck this. Again, mm. like seriously, yes. part of my language. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, but like, that's where I'm at. I'm just like, we need to Yeah, it's a game these guys play. You know, they did it with the tech stocks before. Yeah. And you can just go back every 10 years and they did it with some other industry, but they did it with real estate in 2008. Yeah. And who knows what it'll be this next time around, you know? Yes. But they, they seem to like, 
really like to take, you know, they're good at like driving the market up, selling out, then they let it crash and they buy at the bottom and they have all the time in the world to wait till it goes up again while all the rest of us are like, we don't have the time to wait for this. You know, we need to eat tonight. You know? It's like, <laughs> what'd you get? Well, for me, um, don't run. <laughs> no run. Don't run. Um, what else? Uh, what I think and create, take action and just make it happen. Because uh-huh. I have a lot of ideas and it's, oh yeah, this and that, but I don't like center and do it and ground it. Mm-hmm. Um, my Mexico City in mind is just, you know, <laughs> all the time. So when I just got here, like, everything is slow. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> it's Tucson. <laughs> It is the higher vibration of Mercury, yeah. 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 Just the equal houses off of the Saturn return thing, that was really good insight. Uh Uh-huh. And just to know that we're, um, we're, we're, I guess where it's transiting my chart Mm -hmm. helps me a lot, too. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, it, 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 uh, it will take care of me. Uranus will take care of me. <laughs> yeah, it will. It just, it's its still in my 10th house. It's about to go in my 11th, but I've had, I don't know how many career changes in these past eight years. I'm just like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. What's next? Okay, I'm not doing that anymore. What's next? And my current one is astrologer, so you know, maybe that was its lesson as it moved all the way through. So, it's know. astrology. I know. So. We'll see. So. Well, I'm just fascinated by all of this because I'm, I'm new and very interested in learning and, um, and how these planets affect us. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to gain some insight and understanding and, and um, I need to... I think I need to look more into this yeah. to, to, to really understand really what's going on. Because I mean, I'm dealing with a chronic illness, right. so I'm uh, looking for answers anywhere I can get them right. to understand what's going on mm-hmm. with me sure. and uh, how to get better. And so, um, so yeah, I think this is another area in which to to learn and to to make my life much more. Uh, I guess. Uh, Interesting or better? Yeah, improved. Um, yeah, improved. Yeah, Good. just trying to understand all of this. Yeah, yeah, because Wonderful. I know you know with the with the Lyme problem, they, mm-hmm. they say like I mentioned earlier, yeah. people are affected by the moon, and right. I really I really didn't understand any of this stuff. Yeah, uh huh. <laughs> the how and the why. Uh huh. This is happening like this. So there's there's more to it than yeah. just what we <laughs> yeah. see on the surface. Right. There's more to this. Yeah, true. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, I feel like I was so late, so I missed like a lot of the substance, but um, a lot of what you said like really obviously resonated with me. I'm traveling to Israel on Tuesday, and from there I go all over Europe, and, and so it was so on point. Um, and then all of this change that you're talking about, um, like electricity and communally and, and all of that, also really resonated with me because I think that um, like my friends, my like the young people like my age are all like starting to talk about like how we how we want to do things like how we want to be when we're older. I'm 23, so I'm just at that like pivotal time where like I'm not in school anymore, but I'm not an adult yet. Like I'm still really transitionary and. Um, so we talk a lot about like how we want to, like, what we want to do when we have kids, like where where we want to do it, how we want to do it. And everyone is all like, yeah, I want to have a community. Like it's going back to that like it takes a village to raise a kid. Like we all kind of are like, yeah, like we want our kids to have access to all these different perspectives and types of people. And um, yeah, I mean, you know, I love astrology so much, and I always learn so much from these meetings. So yeah, I appreciate just being here.